But let's pray uh, before we switch gears into the word that God uh, has for us today. Heavenly Father, we're here in this space. We pray that you could help us. We are all carrying things, uh, things that can distract us, keep us from you. Lord, I pray in this space that you could show us just how you're right with us so that you can hold these things for us so we can just be present to listen to your spirit's gentle whisper to each one of us. God, I pray that you would take uh, these words that I've written down, these words that I'm about to speak, and, and use them for your purpose, to soften hearts, to encourage hearts, to extol and lift up, Lord. Help us to turn our faces towards you today. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name and by the power of your spirit amongst us. Amen. Can you hear me now? I'm going to... Thank you. The fan. I like the fan. It's good. And as soon as my knee stops shaking, I'll begin... It's not a perfect system, but we're working on it. I think, yeah, this will be better. So, this morning, Whitney woke up at 5.30. I didn't ask her if I could share this story. Um, but she woke up because there is this phenomenon that all of us deal with. Uh, Whitney woke up because she thought she heard the kids crying. She could have swore a kid is crying. There was no child crying in our house. Uh, and so when she realized there was no kid crying and she closed her eyes and just lay down on the pillow and was preparing to fall asleep again because the phantom cry had not happened, that's when she heard it, the rooster. <laughs> so we have chickens. Roosters are not what this sermon is about, but phantom sounds, that's what it reminded me of this morning. Maybe you've experienced that before, the phantom vibration or the phantom ring of your own phone as technology follows us around. Maybe you're a parent who's heard the phantom cry of your child in the middle of the night or across the room. Or maybe you're one of these parents that it doesn't matter whose child's screaming at the park, it sounds like your child, so you turn. Have you had that experience? Am I hearing something? Is it? Is it not? Today we're talking about hearing God's voice. For some people, I imagine it's easy. For some people, they find it more difficult. Some people are like, how? How do I hear God's voice? And how do I know that it's God's voice? And I'm sure still others of you are like, what do you mean hear God's voice? I don't think I've ever heard anything like that before. Well, I hope that today that uh, you can find some hope in uh, my words and in this message, we're going to hear a story about uh, a boy, likely at this time a teenager or a young man, Eli, an old uh, man, and a little bit about Hannah, um, a mother, a parent, um, and there and how God uh, speaks and how we can live in faith with God through each of these people. I'm going to start by uh, just reminding us uh, of the Holy Spirit. So we talked about that earlier, this Holy Spirit amongst us. I just said that, uh, you know, as, as, uh, as I ended our prayer. What does that kind of mean and what is that about? You know, we follow Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. And uh, Jesus, you know, we read that he died on a cross, but he was resurrected. He came back to life. And after... Uh, you know, that time he's with his disciples and he's teaching them and he's like, you know, I have to leave. And they don't want him to leave. They think this is terrible. They're like, well, why wouldn't you just stay forever? Why wouldn't you just teach us here on earth? And Jesus has this message for them. John 16, verse 7. It, once I find the tiny numbers, but I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. This counselor, this person that Jesus speaks of, is the Holy Spirit. 
part of God as we understand God Father, God Son, Jesus, and God Holy Spirit. We believe that God's Spirit is here amongst us, speaking and inviting each of God's children into relationship with him. That wasn't the case in the time of the story that we're going into. This is a, uh, something that only occurred after Jesus' death. So what was it like when it wasn't as clear? Let's turn here to read from the Old Testament. We're going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Uh, if you're using one of these books, uh, Bibles, that's uh, connected to the seats there. It's on page 192. I'm just going to read from uh, one pretty much down to the end here. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? But Eli said, I did not call Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me? My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went down and lay down in his place. Then the Lord came and stood there calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. And that time I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons made themselves com contemptible, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Samuel lay down until morning, and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision, but Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, Here I am. What was it he said to you, Eli asked? Do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The word of God for the people of God. That's a weird story. God is going to judge a household. Recently, we um, were reading about how, uh, a few months ago, we read about how um, Aaron's sons uh, were judged by God and how they lost their lives. And that was a hard story, too. And this is very similar. Eli and his whole household is going to be judged. So what do we have going on here? Eli is a priest. He works in the temple. And his job is to speak to the people on behalf of God. He's kind of like a, a voice to the people for God. He helps them to figure out what God wants, to understand the law, to carry out the sacrifices. He helps them learn to pray, to connect with God. That's who Eli is. Then we've got Samuel. Samuel is a child. He's uh, Eli's helper. So uh, Eli's got a lot of jobs to do in the temple. He needs help. 
Uh, Samuel, his backstory is he was born. Uh, his mother, um, like the story that we understand of Hannah was that she was struggling to become pregnant. But she would pray and she prayed and she prayed and she prayed to God. And she said, I'm going to dedicate my child in service to you uh, if you will honor my prayer and you will bring me a child. So that's who, uh, where Samuel came from. He was born of this faith that his mother had. And what do we need to know? Well, it said it right in the passage. God's voice was rare in those days. It wasn't like God was just speaking to everybody. He would spoke to a very set few. He spoke at set times. But it wasn't poured out. Not like today. God's spirit has not come yet. Not like after Pentecost. So, shouldn't God be speaking to Eli? I mean... Eli is the priest of the temple, the old wise man, the one people come to, looking to. Well, God has been talking to him, hasn't he? I mean, even when he talks to Samuel, God reminds Samuel, he says, I've been telling Eli about this. He knew about these sins. He had chances time and again to turn towards God. You see, God speaks to each one of us every single day, and we have a choice. Are we going to turn towards Christ? Like God's asking us, are you going to become more like Jesus, my son, today? Or do you want to choose your own selfish path? We have a choice each and every day to turn. I think when we turn each day, we hear God more clearly. But when we say no, It's not that God doesn't speak, but it's that we've allowed other voices to speak to us, to gain the prominence, the place where we hear them first. Eli did try to deal with his sons. You can go back and read it. Finally, he did. But how did he do that? Well, this week as I was studying and as I was reading, I went back and it says, I have heard what people say about you. It's Eli's image here. Can you hear it? The people are talking. You're eating the sacrifices in ways that are unholy. You're sleeping with women in the temple. You're doing unholy things. Golden Gay, one of the um, commentators that I was reading with, it just suggests that Eli did the bare minimum. He kind of was like, well, God's saying this, and I'm going to kind of go do with it. But it wasn't enough. That's why God has to speak again. He comes and speaks through a different person. What is Eli doing when he goes to his sons? It's more like he's going to them, hey, just stop doing this, or could you just get better at hiding it so people don't know that you're so terrible? Eli's eyes have grown dim. Not just his physical age, but his spiritual age. Even in this story, it takes three times before he recognizes God calling to Samuel. Why is that? I think it's because he's been turning away. But how does Eli react when he realizes it's God's voice? He turns. He turns in the right direction. He helps Eli. He fulfills his role. He tells Samuel how he is to respond. He does his job. He listens. And again, he listens at the end. Can you hear him? Let it be as God has spoken. Last week, we had a message from uh, Matt Miles. He's leading our Meeting House community, and he talked about change and the big changes that are undergoing our larger meeting house church. It's a season where we really need to be attuned to God speaking. But it's a season where I think we need to be aware of stories like Eli's and Samuel's. Because while this is a season of change for the church, too, it's always us. We're always called to change individually and as smaller bodies 
of Christ here, smaller churches. We're always called to become more like Christ, like Jesus. So what does the story have to teach us? I think it reminds us to remember our purpose. Our purpose to share uh, the message of love of Jesus. He gives it in Matthew 28. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus has given us a job. It's that same job that Eli had to teach people about God, Jesus, the Spirit, about how God created us to live in relationship with him, about how God has a better way of life for all all of us. Eli is doing that, but sometimes gets tripped up when God shows up in new ways. I think sometimes we can let our traditions or our practices or the rhythms of life that we've been taught to get in the way of when God might be trying to speak to us in a new way or maybe God's speaking to somebody else in a new way. I think we need to pray to God that we have eyes and ears to recognize God's voice, not, when, not just when it, that voice is speaking to us, but when that voice is speaking to others. Two, uh, another example of Eli doing this is that when Hannah was praying uh, for Samuel in the beginning of this uh, book of Samuel, Eli's first thought, the first thing he does when he sees Hannah praying is that he rebukes her because she's praying so passionately that he assumes that she's drunk, which is the same thing that people thought of the disciples when Pentecost came down. You see, Hannah didn't hear from God, but she had faith, and she was in the space where she was praying. Well, Eli shifted gears and helped her, helped her to pray uh, once he realized it. But it's just an example of how he'd been tripping up for years, getting stuck in the particular ways that God would speak and use uh, his word to get to speak to people. Again, Eli didn't recognize God speaking to Samuel at first, but it took time. If you have been in a season where you haven't heard God speak one way, but all of a sudden God opens your mind and you recognize his voice where it's been before, don't be proud. Be humble like Eli and step into that and help people. Help others and trust that word that God is speaking. It's great to have practices and beliefs, traditions to reach out to God, but how are you creating space for God to speak in new ways? Invite God to speak even in new ways. The Bible is full of stories of God moving and getting in front of his people in new ways. We talked about, uh, even for the kids, how God showed up as a pillar of fire uh, for the Israelites at night when they were in the wilderness so that they would know that he is there. God is constantly trying to get in front of his people, trying to remind them of why they had been made and that there's a greater purpose for all of us. Samuel, Samuel in this story, He's never heard God's voice before, but he's reactive when he does hear it. Maybe you've heard God in a new way or in a way that nobody else has heard before, a way that you haven't heard before, maybe just in an uncommon way. What are those things that you've been hearing? Maybe you're not sure is this from God or not. 
What do you do? How do you figure out, is God speaking? How would you know? Well, there we test it. So we invite you to come and bring what you hear from God to us. Share it with us in community. We have smaller groups, home churches that meet, but also you can talk to pastors, people like me, share those things. But then also we can turn turn to God's word. We have this Bible. And why do I say turn here? We have to turn here because we have to test these things that God is telling us against the character of God that we find only when we go and uh, encounter God through scripture. Ultimately in Jesus, the son who came to reveal who God was, but also who we could be if we join in. If we answer God's call and partner with God for the renewal of all things. Get into community and ask us. Tell us. Invite us to test with you. Lastly, maybe you don't think you have ever heard from God before. That's okay. Hannah hasn't heard from God either. Yet, Samuel's mother believed without hearing. And she prayed in full faith. She wasn't deterred by not being sure, by not hearing. She wasn't discouraged she prayed with the full knowing of who God was. He was the God who'd already been revealed to her through her scriptures. It was this God who had given children before. The God of Sarai and, Ab and Abram, of Sarah and Abraham, her ancestors. The God who opens wombs. If you are here because you're praying in hope, let us pray with you. Whether you're sure or not, today, God's Spirit is speaking, seeking ways to get in front of each one of his beautiful children, of you. You each carry God's image, so do our neighbors, our co-workers. Let us pray today together with the same faith that Hannah had, with a heart to serve like Samuel, and not just with ears to hear like Eli, but with the courage and the conviction and the strength to say yes when the Spirit calls. God gives us things to do, and you know those things can be very hard to do. Eli had a hard task to do in changing the trajectory of his family. And uh, maybe God's invited you into a hard space, but that's why we're here. We're here to walk alongside, to help, and to encourage. Where are you today? Do you feel more like Eli? Maybe you haven't heard from God in a while. Maybe you feel like your eyes have gone dim. Maybe you're not sure. It's always good to pray for God to open our ears and our eyes. Maybe you're like Samuel, ready and eager to serve. Pray that God would give us wise people like Eli in our lives to help us to recognize God's voice, but also other encouragers to help us so that we later on in life or along the path, we won't lose strength like Eli did or the ability. We will be able to continue to press in where God calls us with courage. Maybe you haven't heard God's voice and you're still waiting today. We pray that you have the faith to continue to pray like Hannah. Let's pray as we close. Heavenly Father, thank you for your gentle, quiet presence. I thank you, Lord, for all the people in my life who have brought me to this point as we give thanks, Lord, for each person that has spoken your word of love over us, prayed a prayer over us, opened up and created space for others to encounter your love. Help us, Lord, to be courageous when you give us hard tasks. Help us, Lord, to have faith when we doubt what we've heard. And Lord, make us ready to be your hands and feet today. We pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.